Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in-depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company, I'm not being paid by them to do these videos, and if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video, along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. In this video, I want to talk about a button that only appears in a NIC plugin when you use that plugin with Photoshop. The button I'm talking about is down here in the lower right hand corner. It's this brush button. And again, it only appears with Photoshop. So you won't see that brush button if you're using the plugin with Lightroom. Furthermore, if you, when you were in Photoshop, converted the layer to a smart object and then uh, sent it over into the plugin, that brush button will not appear either. So it only appears on a regular layer. Now for this demonstration, I just have this image already open up in Silver Effects Pro 2. And all I did was add this high structure harsh preset to it. So I want to use this brush button. Simply go down to the lower right hand corner and click on the button. And when you do, it actually closes down the plugin. And you'll see we're back in Photoshop and it's processing and saving the image. And when it's done, what will happen is the selective tool will appear. Also, your, um, your uh, Photoshop will automatically open up the brush tool. Also, over here on the right hand uh, layers palette, you'll see that there's a layer added there, and there is a black mask added to the layer. Now, if I turn off the mask by holding in the shift key and clicking on the mask, you'll see that this is our processed image. So what the brush button did is it fully processed our image. It opened it up into Photoshop, put a black mask on it so that you don't see it, opened up the selective tool, and opened up the brush. It also, in the palette area here, it gave us our default black and white uh, colors and put white as the foreground color. Now, if you look at the selective tool, you'll see that really we just have four buttons here, paint, erase, fill, and clear. And really what it's prompting us to do now is to paint on this mask. So it's on the mask and it's defaulted to the brush painting white. So if I come in here and I just start painting, I'm painting white on the layer mask, as you could see. And it has, as you could see, just allowed the um, processed image or black and white image to come through in this case, because I used Nick Silver Effects Pro 2. Now, the other buttons here, I could come in here and I could just clear, and that will give me back a full black mask. I could click fill and it's going to fill that entire mask in white. So we have our, our um, fully processed image showing through. I could click clear again and we also have a race. So if I do come in here and I paint and I make a mistake, I could click on the erase and then I could, all it does really is swap these colors. So now we're painting in black and it, allows you to, you know, fine tune your paint or wherever you're painting. So that's really all it is. That's really all you do. 
If you click discard, it actually will get rid of the entire layer. So all the work we've done in Nick Silver Effects Pro in this uh, Pro 2 in this instance would be gone. We'd have to start over. If we click apply, it just closes down the selective tool and applies what we wanted to it. Now, there's some limitations here. For an image like this, maybe I want to use selective color and I want this um, this street light control box to be in color and I want everything else to be in black and white. Well, I could obviously come in here and just try to paint it um, you know, in white. Switch these around. Oops, sorry. Paint in white. But an easier way and way most of us probably would do it is we'd make a selection first, right? Well, if I go to the select tool and I start to make a selection, it will seem like it's working. Let's just say that's my selection. As soon as I let go of the left mouse button, it says you are in selective editing mode. Click discard or apply to return to Photoshop's normal functionality. So you're going to click OK and you lose your selection. So there's really a limitation here. You're only allowed to use the brush, period. And, you know, go about whatever you want to do. Now, in my opinion, it's easier to not use this brush button at all. And I'm going to just quickly demonstrate that. I'm going to close this down, get rid of this. Um, actually, you know what? What I could do is I could show you, I could just click discard and it gets rid of that whole layer. So you see how it did that? So I want, I'm going to send this image again over into Nick Silver Effects Pro 2. I'm going to click on filter. I'm going to go down to Nick Collection and I'm going to go to Silver Effects Pro 2. So it's going to open up and I'm going to add that same exact preset, this uh, high structure harsh. All right, now instead of clicking the brush button, I'm just going to click the OK button. OK. Now, once it's done processing, you'll see that it has that layer there. So there's our before layer and our after layer. Now I could add my own mask to this by going down here in the lower left hand side. And this little icon is the mask icon. And if I hold the Alt or Option key and when I click that, I'll get a black mask. So we have the same effect we just tried to do a second ago, right? We have this black mask. Um, I could make it white, whichever is easiest, because all, all I really want to do is make this uh, um, box color and everything else black and white. So I could do it either way. I'm doing it actually the harder way now, but let's follow through. I'll get the, um, the selection tool and I'm going to do a very rough, bad selection. Okay. Because we don't have time to refine this and make it look perfect. So we're just going to go very quickly and I'm going to do my best to select the box and only the box. All right. And we're not going to refine it or anything because we're not trying to get a perfect selection for this demonstration. Although, if I really was doing this, of course I'd want a perfect selection, right? And we'll just get rid of this little part over here. Okay, it's a horrible selection, but let's say that we like that, okay? So that's our selection. Now I'm going to invert the selection. Here, let's get rid of this little part too, because it bothers me. All right, we're going to invert the selection by hitting Shift, Command, I. Okay, so now the box isn't selected, everything else is selected. I get the brush tool by hitting the B key on the keyboard. I'm going to paint in white. I'm going to get a huge brush and I'll just go right across everything. And you could see there's other ways I could do that. I could have done fill. You don't, you know, you don't have to email me and tell me. I know I could have done uh, fill, fill with white, other different ways, but to give you an idea of using the brush because that's what you would be using if you used the quote brush button in Nick Silver Effects Pro 2. So, um, in my opinion, that brush button is kind of worthless. Uh, there's not really an instance I could think where I would need to use that brush button or prefer to use the brush button over 
just doing something in Photoshop after I was done in Nick Silver Effects Pro 2. So, or in any Nick plugin for that matter. So, that's it. That's, I hope, a better explanation of that brush button and what you can and can't do with it. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.